morning, e-tech learners! Kamusta? This is Teacher Deo, your empowerment technology teacher, hoping you're still safe and healthy as we thrive in the new normal. Today's learning episode, we will talk about how to write a concept paper. That's right, this is going to be a supplementary video for your week 3 learning activity sheets in which you will be making your performance task for the second quarter. So join me as we discover how to write a concept paper for an advocacy project for social change. One of the activities in your learning activity sheets is to observe your surroundings and take note of the social issues of your community. It might be poverty, unemployment or underemployment, injustice, crime, graft and corruption, prostitution, AIDS, drug dependency, global warming, and many others. Now that you identified them, what are you going to do with them? For some, activists have been very vocal about these social issues on the streets and use social media as their platform of expressing their rants and vent out their frustrations on the government's lack of action to these issues and problems. As an empowerment technology learner who is also a social change advocate, instead of ranting on Facebook your frustrations, I challenge you to think of ideas or concept for a program or project that you can propose and implement in your community as one option to solve or lessen these problems. And this is where a concept paper comes in handy. As they say, a concept paper is an academic way of expressing yourself. Let us start our lesson with the definition and purpose. In your learning activity sheets, you will read there a concept paper are summaries of projects that contemplate interest, experience, and expertise that commonly serve as a purpose of delivering an in-depth discussion of a certain topic that a person has a strong position on. So what does this mean? To keep it simple, a concept paper is just a one to two pages overview or brief summary of your projects, presenting only the important details like the what, why, where, when, and how you will carry out your advocacy project. So, what is the purpose of a concept paper, and why do we write them? First, it serves as the foundation of a full proposal. Just like in writing your research, your research advisor will ask you to make a one to two page concept paper before proceeding to your proposal, which usually have two to three chapters. Your advisor will check your paper and see if your idea or concept is well presented, clear, and possible. Once approved, you can proceed now on writing your research proposal. Second is it is used to pick the interest of a potential donors or funding agencies. Remember that some projects need resources or budget in order to run. So producing a concept paper will allow you to convince potential funders or donors to help you with your advocacy project. Third, it determines the feasibility of a project before it is implemented. Your concept paper helps you and your funding agency to know if your project is possible, convenient, and if it is worth the time, effort, and resources. And finally, a concept paper is used to gather feedback. Always remember that feedback and constructive criticism are the best tool to improve and enhance your project. So take note and consider them as you develop your project. We now come to the part of writing your actual concept paper. How are you going to do it? You need a structure, a template, or a format. Remember, a concept paper comes with different formats, but for our class, we will adopt the format with, three, with the six parts, namely the title of the project, 
introduction, purpose, description, support, and the contact information. Let us make use of the example found in your activity sheets as our guide in writing your paper. We have here the title, Education on Wheels. When naming your project, make sure that, that it is easy to read, relevant, short, simple, but catchy enough to get the interest of your stakeholders. Some notable existing projects like my Pera sa Basura Project, Sagip Ka Pamilya, Linis Bayan, Brigada Escuela, Adopt a Student Program, and many more are sample projects that have that you can easily tell what their project is all about. Next is the introduction. This part contains the vision and mission of your project. And it should contain the clear problem you wanted to solve. Why and how your project would be beneficial for other people and your community. And this is where you need to set your objectives that are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bounded. From the example, you will read that the vision and the why of the project is to literate out school children, also children attending in the government school but are dwelling in slums. And the mission and the how of the project is to bring teachers to the doorstep of these educationally deprived children, introduce modern study aids, materials, and to confer values and morals among the slum children. Because their problem is they have these children who are deprived of education living below the poverty line in slum areas. The third part of your concept paper is the purpose. This is where you state the compelling reason for your project. In the example, the main motive of this project is to literate the children who are deprived of education dwelling in slum areas. The project is worth sponsoring for it will enable out-of-school youth develop their skills and intellect. This will also help less fortunate families to have children participate in the free lectures, seminars, and trainings to be conducted by the proponents and invited speakers. So in this part, you need to make a strong atmosphere of purpose. Your purpose should not only prove that you're right, but also, it's more about how you can help other people and your community. Remember, your main purpose here is to bring something good and create an impact for a change. The next part of your concept paper is the description. This contains the methodology or procedures of the project. In the example, the project will gather children and conduct a class inside the bus. The project will be happening in five different barangays every Saturday of the month from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Attendees will be given free snacks. Leaflets and books will also be available during the discussion proper. Topics to be included on the seminar will be English, Math, Science, Media and Information Literacy, and others. The project will also launch a website and a Facebook page at Education on Wheels. So you can see here the full details on how the project will be done. From the place, the date, the time, materials, and website that they need in documenting their project. The fourth part of your concept paper is the support. This element of concept paper contains your budget needed for the project. Every project needs funds in order to run. Thus, support from a sponsor or donor is necessary, especially if your project is a feeding program or a fundraising. And finally, the last part of your concept paper is the contact information. This includes the information on how you can be contacted, your name as the proponent, 
your address, phone or telephone number, your email address, and the website or a Facebook page. And that was the six important parts of the concept paper. You can scan other concept paper found in the internet and study how they are written. Now that you know the structure of your paper, a standard format for encoding and printing is instructed in your learning activity sheets. So that wraps up our lesson on how to write a concept paper. Your ideas are worth sharing, so I hope you're ready transferring those ideas into a concept paper. I look forward to reading them. Thank you for listening and still stay safe and kind.